So the last objective is um, related. It kind of starts to ask us to narrow down now that we've you know we've talked about our values, big value areas um, in broad strokes. And then we pick three or four that we really want to focus our attention on. What are you currently done? What are you currently doing? What have you done in the past? What, you, what can you do better? Um, you know, what qualities do you wanna to bring to this uh, value area? How are you going to generate that in your life? And then the last step in this values clarification um, step or, uh, is to first identify those areas of pain in relation to those values. And so that takes getting back to the other skills that we've worked on, um, getting into the present moment, right? Being very mindful and observing, you know, taking the role of that observing self where you can hear the thoughts, you can feel the feelings, you can remember the memories, you can feel the urges and the sensations. And really get in touch with and identify those thoughts, feelings, memories, urges, and sensations, which are functioning as barriers to your embodiment of the values that you say that you hold near and dear to your heart and that you care deeply about and that you want to take action in the service of. Okay. So step one is to think about, you know, to really get in contact with that pain, right? Because we first have to identify what those pain points are in order to harness that energy and, and, uh, create purpose out of it. And then, um, and then the next step, which is, uh, which is an activity that is from the flip the script book is to flip or is to speak life into those values. So you identify your pain and the negative thoughts and those barriers, the things that are presenting challenges to you in, in relation to living your values on a daily basis. And then thinking about if you were on the other side of that, right? If you were the person who was hearing somebody say these things or demonstrate these things in relation to their own value areas, what would you tell them? If you were, if you were their behavioral coach or their life coach, what would you tell that person? Um, what would you tell if the person was the uh, you know was somebody that you loved the very most? What advice would you give if they were holding back and really truly believed that they were not good enough and not enough to fulfill those values? Um, and then start you know thinking about how you would show up on a daily basis to um, help them break through and overcome those barriers. So this was kind of a, this was a fun and interesting uh, exercise um, because it, it made me think of a couple things that I saw, I've seen recently on Facebook. Um, and it was the first one was the video by a woman, I can't remember her name, but uh, it's the um, kind of the key phrase was, be a lady, be a lady, they said. And so it was all of these, you know, all of these contradictory statements about what it means to be a lady and how can you know, really, you know, the message is, you know, how confusing it is to, you know, to try to live up to somebody else's conception of who you're supposed to be and why you're supposed to be that way. And that was, so that was really kind of a meaningful video that, you know, touched me very deeply. Um, and the other one was a video montage that was, that was,
posted by Louise Hayes um, that was um, you know, snapshots of people's, you know, their in, inner behavior, their, ver, you know, their inner verbal behavior, um, similarly to the things that I'm going to show, share with you uh, about my value areas that demonstrated to me and hopefully is demonstrating to the rest of the world how similar we all are in regard to our negative self-talk and our lack of confidence in ourselves. Um, you know, I've spent the majority of my life beating myself up, thinking that, you know, somehow I'm unique or there's something wrong with me or I must be crazy to have these feelings and you know oh you're this successful person why are you crying all the time it doesn't make sense you, you there must be something wrong with you you need help and um you know it was really it's been really eye-opening to me over the past couple of years to uh you know kind of break out of my shell where i didn't really have any friends and so i didn't really have contact with a lot of different people um, and now I'm, you know, taking more chances and I'm putting myself out there and I'm trying, you know, working really hard to um, develop my friendship skills. <laughs> um, but in doing so, what I have found repeatedly is that everybody that I have come in contact with, they have the same fears and insecurities and, you know, negative self-talk. It, it's different um, in many regards, but in most in most, you know, in every really way, shape, and form, they're the same. The form might be different, but the function is exactly the same. It just depends on probably the, the experiences that you've heard and the words that you've heard. So for each of my value areas, I kind of thought of, I, you know, kind of tried to get present and really think about um, the, or, you know, listen to the thoughts and the feelings that were coming to me as I was thinking about my challenges and barriers, barriers in this area, in these areas. So in regard to my friends and social life, the things that I, you know, that came to me, that verbal behavior, that self, you know, beating up, um, that we are want to do sounds something like this. No one really cares about me. I'm boring and I'm uninteresting. There's no way anyone wants to hang out with me. They're just inviting me out of obligation. I just feel so tired and alone and isolated. I hate my life. And I'm always depressed. Everyone always leaves me, so there's no reason I to try to connect. Why am I so disconnected? I don't even understand how to be a good friend. Oh, I don't want to go. It's going to be too overwhelming. I should just stay home. So if I was a person, you know, if I was hearing this, if somebody in my life was saying these things about them, you know, I, I had to really think about what would I, what would I say? How would I coach them through that? And it, it came to me that while, you know, I've worked really hard to develop my skills in relation to helping individuals uh, with developmental disabilities and helping their families. I don't know that I'm a very good coach yet um, in regard to kind of these types of problems, but this was a really fun one um, to think about what I might say, what I might say to myself. And so um, I would encourage you to read the script that I posted as part of the lesson. Um, because I put in there, kind of, you know, my statement about what I would say and how I might, you know, how I might uh, respond to myself if I were, um, if I were out, if I was an outsider looking in um, and hearing, hearing my, hearing myself say these things. The next bear, you know, the next uh, value area is recreation and fun. And my barriers, my barriers and negative self-talk sound something like, I don't have the time or the money for fun things. There's way too much work to do. Don't give in to that urge. No, you can't do it. 
I, if I spend time doing fun things, people will think I'm lazy. Oh, no, I can't go outside. It's too wet. It's too cold. It's too dark. How dare, how dare I think of having fun? I'm just too serious. Don't have time for that. I don't have time to go outside. There will be time for rest when I'm dead. I've heard that one a lot in my life. And I've got too many responsibilities and going out for adventures would be way too irresponsible. But I know now, I mean, the just, you know, being able to label these thoughts and then see them for what they really are and diffuse from them is such a powerful experience uh, because it really kind of brings home that idea of just how ridiculous a lot of these things are. These things that we say to ourselves and we beat ourselves up and we beat ourselves down and we push away our urges and we, you know, um, you know, deny ourselves satisfaction. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty wild when you really start to think about it and, and dig a little bit more deeply. Here are my barriers in relation to citizenship and community. So, and why kind of my excuses around why, you know, I'm not doing these things. I'm not living in accordance with this value because I've moved around too much. And so I'm really not a part of any community. And if, you know what, if I didn't exist, nobody is gonna miss me. There's really, I mean, these problems are huge. They're bigger than me. And there's nothing I can do to affect that change. The problems in the world are just way too big. And the pain and suffering others feel is just way too deep. I can't allow myself to be part of that community. It just hurts too bad. Also, if I, tr if I go out and be a part of community, that means I actually have to let people know who I am and nobody is going to accept me. The world does not need more broken people like me. And really, I don't have anything of value to offer to the world. Do I really believe these things? No, not now, I did. Um, but they're, you know, they're the things that's that, they're, that's the negative self-talk I have. Whether or not it's true, doesn't matter. That They are the things that I, you know, these um, default mode network, these automatic thoughts, these automatic responses I would have in relation to any thought, any consider consideration about doing anything um, for or with my community. Um, and lastly, in relation to art and creative expression, my negative self-talk and my barriers sound something like this. I can't play the piano very well. I can't sing at all, at all, so I better just be quiet. And really, the things I create aren't worth sharing whatsoever. Nobody cares what I have to say because I'm not that creative and other people are way more creative for, more, way more creative for, for, or than me. So we'll just leave that to them. Not worthy of being noticed. I'm just gonna hide myself over here in the corner because if people saw me, if they saw me dance, they can't do that. That would be too embarrassing. I just can't even. And I can't share my work because like that anxiety, like being able to, ugh, ugh, nope, too much anxiety, it's overwhelming, makes me want to vomit, and um, I don't have the confidence. I really just feel like crying. And, and honestly, I just, I cry all the time because I feel stuck. I want to share, but I can't, and so I cry, and then, you know, nobody, nobody likes ugly cry face. I, um, I wanted to share a story about something that happened this week that was very moving to me and kind of was something that was that I'd never done before. Um, and it actually was an experience where I got to um, coach somebody else who was actually going through this same, like these same negative um, self-talk uh, statements in regard to her own um, artistic and creative expression. Um, and it was a, a daughter of one of my really close friends who, um, who's learning how to play an instrument. 
And um, every Thursday we have a community, it's called Soup Night. It's a community gathering. We all get together and have a potluck and you know, visit and enjoy each other's company. And this week was a little bit different than most because we, have, we had some uh, visiting musicians who come to the island every year to teach music to the children in our school because we don't have a regular music program. And so, um, you know, it's an awesome opportunity for the kids. And then the two, you know, the two people who were teaching this music class, they came to soup night. Um, and they, you know, they brought their instruments and after we all ate, they wanted to play music and sing, which was really awesome. And it was a surprise because I didn't expect that at all. Um, but so this, um, this young woman is learning to, she's learning how to play an instrument. She had participated for the past two weeks in the lessons at school and was, you know, starting to build up her confidence, but she was still um, pretty uh, shy. Um, and she, um, you could see that she wanted to say something. She wanted to, she wanted to play, she wanted to sing, um, but you could, you could see that overwhelming sense of anxiety that, um, that started to take over her and the, take her over and the negative self-talk that started. I can't, I don't want to, I'm, I'm embarrassed. They're going to say, no, I don't want to, you know, she wanted to request a specific song and she couldn't, she, you know, she was shaking. It was just that, that fear response was, you know, all written all over her. And I was able to, in that moment, kind of um, like coach her through and support her and, say all those things that I, you know, need to be able to say to myself in regard to my own ability to have the courage to put myself out there and, you know, open my mouth and sing, even though it's nerve wracking and, you know, play the piano in front of others, even though it's nerve wracking. Um, and so it was a really, like, it was a really cool experience, especially in, re in regard to the fact that we were gonna be talking about this this week. Um, and it was really fun for me to see her and you know, be able to kind of you know, gradually coach her and guide her. And you know, she ended up, you know, she took a chance and she was nervous and it was hard for her to play. And she was you know, full of self-doubt and you know, start stopping. And she was trying to play the fiddle. She was like, oh, I can't. Um, but she started to and you know what she did play she sounded really good and the rest of the group you know reinforced her and encouraged her and it was a really like you know happy lovely experience um and at the end she just you know she gave me this ginormous hug and thanked me for um being there for her and supporting her through that um and it was, you know, like I felt, I felt good about being able to be that person for her and, you know, help her through this challenging time in her life. Um, but it was also so, so like therapeutic and cathartic for myself because like, you know, I see myself a lot in her and the experience that she was having, you know, having that panic attack putting herself out there, being embarrassed, you know, no, you know, they're, nobody's going to like it. They're going to think it's horrible. They're, you know, you know, all of these things. Um, so that was really, it was a really cool experience. Um, and she also got to see the connection to me and kind of my life story and the things that I'm going through as well, because um, earlier in the week uh, at, I had gone to church and, you know, before and after church, I, you know, like to get on the piano and play. I'm still learning. Um, so I'm not really ready to, you know, put myself out there fully. And so I was, you know, I was kind of playing and singing quietly to myself in the corner. And she had come up and was, you know, watching me. And she looked at me and she was like, Abby, your hands are shaking. <laughs> and it was, you know, it was, there were people in the room and it was, you know, outside of that context, I could, you know, I was getting really confident in playing the songs on the piano and I was really good, you know, getting confident at, 
you know, opening my mouth and singing, you know, singing with my full voice. Um, but in that environment, it was still evoked that fear response and that adrenaline rush. And, you know, my hands were shaking and I could barely play and my um, voice was warbly. Um, but it was really like, it was really nice for us to be able to have that, um, to have that connection. So she could see like, mm, yep. So this, you know, adult is also dealing with these same things that I am dealing with as a child. You know, they look different, it feels different, but it's the same. And so it was really, um, it was a really cool and meaningful experience for me that I was able to kind of help her and coach her through that. Um, you know, meaningful for me to help her, but also meaningful for me to, you know, help myself and think about all of those things that all of those nice, caring, compassionate things that I could say to myself in those times when I am you know, struggling to overcome my own, my own personal barriers in regard to this value. So. All right. So that is, we're, we're at the end. The um, homework for this week is to do the readings for uh, next week, there's just a few chapters. Um, they're mostly just the conclusions of the books that we've been reading to continue the daily NTT routine. And then the other activity is the I've Got a Secret activity, which um, is kind of a fun one. I've, I've only done this a couple times um, because I don't know, I'm not very creative and I still don't, you know, I, don't put myself out there very often. Um, but this activity is kind of fun because you, what it asks you to do is just to do, you know, like a random act of kindness, do something for somebody, but without saying, without letting anybody know that you did it. So they don't know that you did it. You don't talk about it. It's just, you know, you keep it a secret. And it's just one of those things that you, um, you know, you keep for yourself and you do it just because it feels good not because anybody else cares that you did it. So, all right. Well, I will sign off and I look forward to seeing you all next week when we're going to start working on our um, personal strategic action plans, which is going to be kind of the culmination of all of the work that we've done over the past couple weeks, um, and more than a couple in the past, six lessons the six weeks and will be kind of that final um, action plan the takeaway from this course that is intended to help guide you on your next steps um, in life in developing and improving your own personal life and um, embodying a more um, peaceful approach a more psychologically flexible approach to your life. So I thank you for your time and I will see you all next week. Have a good one.